and welcome to Edu Search Clinics, where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. As you can see, today's topic is something that is not very commonly discussed. And this is not right because in India and in a lot of parts of the world, we see cases which are advanced when it comes to cancer. So there are two ways to deal with it. One is that we increase cancer awareness. And second is that to cater to this population of patients, all of us need to understand what palliation is, right? And that is why we are discussing this topic in brief. And for those who are interested, it is interesting to know that palliative care is a branch in itself in the field of medicine. And it also needs a multidisciplinary management, just like the treatment part of cancers, as we will see in this presentation. So we are focusing more on biliary cancers in this presentation, but I will also touch upon some of the common issues that are faced by people involved in palliation on both sides, that is the patients, the caregivers and the doctors, right? So before going ahead in biliary cancers, whenever we talk of palliation, we have to understand that palliation involves both the brain, that is the decision-making process, and the mind or the heart, which deals with empathy and dignity, right? So you need a combination of different uh, characteristics to be able to ideally palliate a patient. And what that means is that you have to take care of the quality of life of the patient, disregarding the increase or control of the cancer spread in the body, right? So when we talk of palliation, are all these patients inoperable? That is the first question that is asked by most of our uh, students as well as some of our patients. The answer is no. It is easier to understand that these patients may be untreatable and not inoperable. What that means is that sometimes the patients are operable, but they are unfit. As we will see later in some of the cases, uh, this is going to be a case-based discussion. We will see that some patients are untreatable and not always inoperable, right? So and both these group of patients need palliation. So in this topic, like I said, we are going to see what is untreatable and what is inoperable. And that is why these patients are ideal for palliation. We will see different cases where gallbladder and cholangiocarcinoma type of cancers were inoperable in our experience. We will see the options of palliation for pain management, for obstructive jaundice, for gastric outlet obstruction, as we are focusing on biliary tract cancers. We are going to focus on intra and extra hepatic cholangiocarcinoma and gallbladder and palliation in these inoperable or untreatable cancers. Like I said, palliation involves the planning of symptomatic management as well as the need of counseling, empathy, and education. And these are some of the important points in palliation and we'll touch upon them briefly. So the first point is what is inoperable or what is untreatable? We have to remember that the disease is in an organ and that organ is inside a patient, right? So there is a three-tire system that the disease has affected an organ and that organ is critical for the patient's function. So untreatable or inoperable patient can be extent of disease which is beyond treatment or it can be an unfit organ which has been affected by cancer directly or indirectly or it can be an unfit patient due to various medical comorbidities such as very low ejection fraction or severe kidney disease or chronic liver disease or acute on chronic liver dysfunction which is commonly seen in patients with biliary cancers, right? So this three-tire system is very important to remember when you are assessing operability. Now coming to examples of inoperable biliary tract cancers, if you can see in this scan, this is a patient of gallbladder cancer, right? The gallbladder fossa is completely replaced by a mass. But the problem here is that the portal vein is involved bilaterally. And this case is not surgically resectable. 
these patients commonly present with jaundice because the portal triad gets involved and the aim of treatment in these cases is chemotherapy or simple palliation depending on patient fitness so what we did in this case was we did a bilateral percutaneous biliary drainage and we started this patient on chemo and the intent of treatment was only palliation because this was an inoperable case so coming to unresectable biliary cancers where we are looking at disease extent metastasis beyond the primary organ that is m1 disease as per the ajcc staging makes the disease untreatable or at least unresectable right you may be able to give chemo you may be able to control the disease but you will not be able to cure the disease at this stage distant lymph node metastasis now these are the lymph nodes which i called it two studies portend a poor prognosis when positively involved by biliary cancers pre aortic para aortic inter aorto cable peri cable superior mesenteric artery and celiac axis nodes if these nodes are involved these portend a poor prognosis and they make the case unresectable or at least a case where neoadjuvant chemotherapy should be used to select a good biology disease like we have discussed in previous case that was a gall bladder cancer but in case of a hyler cholangiocarcinoma portal vein involvement now is not considered unresectable if it is reconstructible but arterial involvement is still considered unresectable so these are some of the different points which you should see before starting treatment on a patient with biliary cancer again one another case this patient had an operable primary but like we saw in the previous side a very bulky nodal disease and these patients are now to be started on neoadjuvant chemotherapy and based on response they have to be start selected for surgery this patient did not have a good response the nodal burden was inoperable and the patient was shifted to palliative care again another case of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma which you can see in the left lateral end segment 4 the problem in this case was that the portal vein thrombus in the left portal vein was extending up to the main portal vein right you can see the enhancing portal phase the main portal vein is also involved by the thrombus so that is why this patient was inoperable was kept on palliation coming to hyler biliary cancers and these are predominantly type 4 cholangiocarcinomas or type 3 which involve contralateral vascular structures i am sure all of you i have seen this table of unresectability in hyler biliary cancers i would try to simplify it by saying that just remember the portal triad that is the portal vein hepatic artery and bile duct if any of these structures are involved up to the secondary confluence that is the anterior posterior division okay if any of these structures are involved up to or beyond the secondary confluence bilaterally that patient can't be rejected okay the other point is that if there is involvement of two of three structures in portal triad on opposite sides for example right portal vein beyond secondary confluence with left biliary involvement this becomes inoperable right arterial involvement on the opposite side atrophy of liver on the opposite side so these are some of the cases where resection is not possible in hyler cholangiocarcinoma so we have seen what is untreatable we have seen what is inoperable and we have seen specifically for biliary cancer some cases which were inoperable right now coming to palliation in biliary cancers this is an institutional experience published in indian journal of palliative care which summarizes the different palliative management options that they have taken the problem in this slide is that they have not discussed about the heart part of palliation they have not discussed about how many patients underwent counseling or had educational sessions where they were taught to have realistic expectations so 
the empathy part of uh, palliation is not discussed and that is what i want to stress on in this video all these points are important what they have mentioned so we will discuss them and then we will discuss on some of the points which are important when it comes to palliation so first of all obstructive jaundice things is delirium disease obstructive jaundice reduces the patient's quality of life it pro can produce intractable itching anorexia and generalized fatigue what are the options to manage obstructive jaundice they are endoscopy percutaneous and surgical there are three options endoscopy is preferred in carcinoma gallbladder and in hyalur blocks of bismuth types 1 and 2 right Bismuth types one and two hyalur blocks and carcinoma gallbladder. Metallic stents are preferred these days compared to plastic stents. So that is in short the role of endoscopy. Coming to percutaneous biliary drainage, it is reserved for hyalur cholangiocarcinoma bismuth types three and four, and failure of endoscopy in previous indications. when it comes to percutaneous biliary drainage if the patient has cholangitis then the first step is to do an external drainage to drain all the infection outside then you internalize the external drain which is known as an internal external drainage that is there is a stent or a catheter which crosses the disease but there is also external drainage catheter which is kept inside okay so external drainage followed by internal external drainage followed by internalization which can be unilateral or bilateral okay if there is no infection you can directly go for an internal external drainage or directly go for an internal drainage by endoprosthesis but commonly seen in practice is a step wise approach where first they put an external catheter followed by an internal external drainage and followed by internalization there are palliative chemotherapy and radiotherapy options when it comes to biliary cancers there are two regimens which are most commonly used one is gemcitabine based which can be combined with cisplatin or nepaclitaxel and the other is capecitabine based capecitabine is the oral variant of 5fu right so gemcitabine based and capecitabine based are palliative chemotherapy options we have to remember that when we are palliating with chemotherapy side effects make a very important part of decision making as we are looking at palliation that is maintaining the patient's quality of life side effect should be minimum again coming to palliative radiotherapy and it has found its role in biliary cancers it helps in preserving stent patency it helps in reduction of jaundice and it can also provide pain control all the different forms of radiotherapy have been tried coming to pain management all of you know this who step ladder so i'm not going into detail of it but what is important in biliary cancer is this key consideration that these patients have altered liver function so the who step ladder needs modification of doses as well as modification of drugs when it comes to pain management in biliary cancers we have to remember that these patients have altered drug metabolism faltered or slow drug elimination and that is why their pain management issues arise in these patients we have to avoid drugs with sedative effect we have to avoid opioids as far as possible and we have to avoid drugs that can alter coagulation pathway so these are very important points when it comes to pain management in biliary cancer patients now coming to role of surgery in these patients we have to see three different options one is for gastric outlet obstruction and we can do a palliative gastro jejunostomy this is now done laparoscopically but exceedingly being replaced by enteral stenting again obstructive jaundice that cannot be managed by endoscopy or percutaneous options then we can do a palliative biliary bypass with a palliative gastro jejunostomy if there is gastric outlet obstruction as well and the options are joining the bile duct to the jejunum at the collodocal site or the cbd site or at the chd site or intrahepatically the segment 3 bypass are also an option in these cases right we have to remember that surgery though is a one stop solution 
it is a better option only for patients who have a survival or a life expectancy of more than six months. Patients who have less than six months survival may not benefit from surgical intervention. So those were the common topics that are discussed when we talk of palliation. But now we are coming to the other side of palliation, as in what is lacking in India as well as in major parts of the world when it comes to palliation. The key is that all the team members that are involved in palliation need to have empathy and they have to treat the patients in a dignified manner. Right? The patient and the family need extensive counseling and education so that they understand to have realistic expectations. They have to understand to accept that something like this is happening to their family members and they have to understand to accept the outcomes of it. Right? Like I said, a very important point in palliation that is lacking in today's medical world is that there is no continuum of care. We don't know how to refer these patients, where to refer these patients. Palliative care setups are very few so far and end of life support is nearly extinct, right? So we have to look into these aspects as well. And the multidisciplinary team, as you have seen in this presentation, pain management doctor, medical gastroenterology, endoscopies, intervention radiology, surgery, medical oncology, all these doctors are required for palliation. So just like treatment, palliation is also a multidisciplinary management and this point should be remembered. Like I said, counseling is very important and it is important for the patient as well as for the family. So these points are also very important when you are discussing palliation with a patient and their family. So keep these points also in mind. So to summarize, whenever we talk of palliation, we have to remember that there are two aspects to it. One is the symptom control and the other is quality of life management through non-medical interventions like counseling, continuum of care and palliative care setup arrangement, right? We have seen what is inoperable and what is untreatable. We have seen some cases of inoperable biliary cancers. Palliation options have been discussed for pain, obstructive jaundice, gastric outlet obstruction, as well as we have seen options for palliative chemotherapy and palliative radiotherapy. And we have seen some key considerations when it comes to the topic of palliation. I hope this video helps you in understanding the concept of palliation and a special focus on biliary cancers as liver dysfunction significantly affects the management of these patients. Thank you.